All right, now we're here to play King's Quest V. Already played one, two, three, and four. So naturally we progress into King's Quest V. I want to thank all of the YouTube folks who subscribed to my channel when I asked so that I could get a custom channel. And that's why I made the snazzy intro Have before this. Played King's Quest V? Now, since this is a commentary version, what I'm going to do is I'm just pretty much going to zip through the intro. Uh, if you want to watch the intro in full at normal speed, there is a non-commentary version of this video. If you notice the song here, when it's sped up, it's kind of like pretty hip and it almost sounds like an Irish song. Oh no, King Graham has just noticed that his castle is gone, along with his family. And here comes Cedric the Owl. Cedric is a companion that will follow you throughout the game, through most of the screens. There are some screens he won't go into. Uh, and those are typically the best moments, because he is not there with his annoying voice. So here's he's pretty much explaining, hey, you know what, I saw what happened. Your family got abducted by an evil wizard. My master if you will, can uh, help you. He's not all that great in the head. Uh, which is ironic, because it seems like Cedric is a lot more ill-equipped than the wizard. Uh, he falls off a branch, he can't remember where he put the fairy dust. Stuff like that. His voice is annoying. He is, without a doubt, probably the worst part of this game. So he pours on some fairy dust, and off we go to go follow Cedric to his master, a wizard who should be able to help us fight Mordak, I believe is the evil wizard's name. So things are looking good, and then... BAM! There's the helpful wizard. Looks like, what's going on? Why is our dude sitting in the water? I'm King Graham. This is what's up. So at this point in the story, we do not know why Mordak has taken the castle. Uh, he is Aspo Cedric, and this wizard, whose name is totally slipping my mind at the moment, as to why Mordak would do this, no one is quite sure why. They just say he's evil. Who knows why evil people do evil things? Now the odd thing is, this guy was walking pretty quick, but even sped up, he was moving pretty slowly to get to his chest, and on the regular play, you'll notice he is moving extremely slow. So he gives us a little cracker so that we can understand animals, and then he gives us his wand that he says, you know, has been working for a long time. And I don't know if that's a double reference to something, but this is an Elijah Suit Larry game, so probably not. So he says, hey Cedric, help him out, you go on the quest with King Graham to get things sorted. So in a way, I think this evil might, or this wizard might be a little evil uh, because he is sending Cedric with us, probably because he needs a break from Cedric. So Cedric mentions, hey, go to the town first. So that's where we will go first. Cedric is good for pointing out the obvious, like, for example, watch out, there's a poisonous snake. Clearly, you can see there is a giant snake sitting in the path of the road. And if you've played any adventure game, you know if you just walk up to it, you're as good as dead. There's something you have to do to get rid of that snake. So, since we literally have nothing, we're going to see if we can find what it takes to get past that snake. Now, I never caught this when I initially played, and literally, it was when I was doing this recent playthrough that I realized the evil dog that he's talking about that he had to run into is the same dog, undoubtedly, that you see at the ant hill. Because when you click on the dog, it says an evil dog is harassing the ants. So it's a good chance that that evil dog Cedric is talking about is the same evil dog. So, I took... What, like 20 years for me to pick up on that? And I don't know if anyone else ever has, and is like, oh, you're clueless? I don't know. So over here, uh, just like in any King's Quest game, you want to talk to everyone, pick up everything. There's a dude over here hammering away on a wagon. You offer to help, and he's like, nope, 
I got it, bro. Been at it all day, uh, but I'm pretty sure I got it. With this wagon, I'm gonna need it. Like, all right, well, let's go in here. May I help you, sir? Now, I assume this is a guy, right? That's talking with a little green striped shirt. And I don't know if Sierra was making some kind of stereotypical comment, perhaps not on purpose. Seems to be a guy, he's got the earring in the ear, and if you notice when he walks, and even the tone of his voice is kind of high pitched, when he walks, his hands are at a 90 degree angle, so he's got like that stereotypical, as you would, um, like walk of someone who would, you know, be jokingly called gay. Uh, so I don't know if this is like a subtle reference at, at that kind of joke. It's a guy, he's got the earring, he's got the hand, he's got the walk, he's got the voice. So I don't know. Literally, this is something else that I uh, picked up on only recently because I always thought that this was a girl because I just assumed when I was younger that if you make clothes you're probably a woman I know I was young don't hate me don't fill the comment filled up with hate I was young and naive but now um, ha having replayed it I was like that's definitely a guy I do think that they're making uh, whether intentional or not a, a poke if you will <laughs> at the uh the stereotypical thing. Okay, now we see that's the tailor, and we can click on all the shops. That's the toy shop, and that's the shoe shop. And you can also see that in the street there's something glittering, so we're gonna click on that, and it seems like someone has forgotten a coin, so we're gonna go ahead and pick that up, and then pretty much click on anything else on the screen. Uh, for example, that barrel. We'll see if there's anything in the barrel. And lo and behold, it's a barrel. But inside, there's a fish. The fish seem to have a theme in this game, because you use a fish later on, so you apparently pocket the dead fish. I don't know exactly where Graham is carrying this fish, but it's an adventure game. We just assume they have infinite pockets that, no matter what they put in there, it will never be too big of an item, and the smell is never a concern, such as carrying around a dead fish. So now we go in here and we talk to the toy maker. The shipment of Covenwood has and clearly, like in the what tailor shop, do? that Did jacket, or, the, or, or I should say the cloak, kind of stuck okay, out. Papa? And it's almost the same location where the sled is. So the sled kind of sticks out. Like everything else in here is kind of like a toy, or like a little containment center, like a vase. But that sled kind of sticks out. Even the coloring is a little bit brighter. So we definitely know something is up with that sled. And the toy keeper kind of gives you a clue, saying, "Hey, everything that I that is in here, I've either made, I've bought, or I've traded for." So there is probably a clue that something we're gonna do is gonna come back, and we're gonna either buy something from the toy maker, or we're gonna trade for something. Are most of these toys your creation? And I'm not entirely sure what accent that is supposed to be that the toy maker has. And then we go into the final shop in this town, which is the shoe shop. If you want, but we don't have any shoes to sell you right now. We and she goes on to explain that they don't have shoes, they've been kind of down on the luck, they're old, they're ready to retire and call it a life, and go visit the world without any concerns of work. Is there anything I can do to help? King Graham, being the wonderful nice man, asks, Is there anything I can do? Anything, you know, that I can give? You'd think a king from another kingdom could just send money. But no, this is King's Quest V. There's something extra we're going to have to do for this fine couple so that they can retire along with their dog. doesn't seem to be so good for the shoemaker and his wife. There isn't even one pair of shoes for sale, and the old couple look tired. 
and worn out. And when I did this playthrough, there were several times where I would take a break to go get lunch, uh, go walk the dogs, let the dogs out, whatnot. And I would stop the recording, and several times I forgot to re-enable the recording when I started the game. So there's a few spots where you'll see me and I'll have to basically restore from a previous game or save over an existing game because what I've done is restore back to where I last recorded and had to replay through those portions of the game that I may have already played and saved on without realizing that I wasn't recording the game as I was playing. It would be cool, uh, let's see, this is an example here. It'd be cool, for example, if somehow there was like a little like red recording icon that would flash in a corner of the docs box window so you'd know you're recording. Uh, but that's not there and I don't think it ever will be because the screen capture thing is not really a big part of DOSBox. It's not like what DOSBox is for. It's just a little bonus thing that they threw in. Alright, so over here we have some guy. He's crying. Looks pretty distraught. King Graham, being the great guy that he is, is undoubtedly going to go over here and let's talk to him and see what his problem is. Uh, excuse me, hey, you notice you're down on your log and you're crying. I What's up, bro? I you sitting there on that log. I was wondering if there was anything wrong. Why, yes. And the fair prince says, the hey, I'm a prince. Is. I was I've walking through the woods with my uh, fiancé, wife, She's a whatever she was, princess. and uh, an evil witch came along, did some wicked Especially sorcery, and now we've been separated. I've come back for her, but her I can't find her. About? King no, Graham pretty much says, oh, like that. well, if I see her around, that's I'll let you know. Did. And he's like, cool, old man who's walking through this forest. forest. If you see her, do let her know that I'm looking for her. And King Graham says, sure, cool. That's just exactly what I just said. All right, old man. Well, I won't find her just sitting here. I might as well go on my way. I'm not ever going to find her just sitting around here. Thanks for your concern. So off he goes. All right, so we continue our quest. Now we know we have to help a few people. And we know that we have to help the prince guy. Now we go into this fine house with the smoke coming outside. And Cedric says he'll wait outside. And how is your poor dear mother doing, William? Oh, she hasn't been doing Now keep an eye on that cat, because it'll come into play later. Whenever we can. Thanks for asking, Amanda. Well, Tommy sticks his finger in the pie, which is, once again, another Lucy Larry joke, but we'll leave it alone. The burly man in the odd-looking shirt offers the pie to the family, and they leave. Very, very, very slowly. So the other burly man behind the counter in the odd looking shirt says, hey, it's our last pie. And the man behind the counter says, hey, we are selling pie, and it's only one silver. Just one silver coin each, but take your time. Let me know when you're ready. And King Graham thinks, well, that's a weird coincidence. I just happen to have one silver. Let me buy this fine pie. These pies cost one from the man with the uh, odd got it right here. collar here around his shirt I hope that is purple your custard pie. and his deep oh, dark sure blue shirt. And so now King Graham has a pie. Need to explore the area. 
Let's take a look what this place is. The Swarthy Hog Inn. Doesn't sound like a good place, but let's take a look inside. And Cedric warns you this is a seedy place. I'll hang out outside. So you can see these look like some burly dudes. Not the kind of people you want to mess with. And what keeps happening here is I'm trying to turn around. But the interface in this game can sometimes be quite a pain. So here I am trying to turn around again and it happens again. One thing that they took out in King's Quest 7 that I wish they had not is the ability to restore the game when you know you're about to die anyway. But in King's Quest 7, you're forced to watch yourself die every single time. Alright, so let's press on. We'll come back to that haystack a little bit later. And now we see a bear. What do bears like? Fish. So what are we going to do for the bear fish? There you go. Not a good throw. And Graham is not the least bit concerned that the bear walks back towards him. It's a brave dude. So now the queen bee is like, hey, thanks for saving us. Uh, I'll let you have some of our honey. It seems like that's another Leash Larry joke just waiting to happen. So on the ground you can see that there's a stick. I think it would have been a bit more uh, interactive if while the bear was shaking the tree you see the stick break down rather than just seeing it there. Anyway, King Graham reaches his hand into the uh, trunk of the tree deep into the hole. I clearly need to get to the Leash Larry game so I can tell these jokes. So he gets the honey out of the hole. <laughs> and next we're going to go up north now that we have this stick. And the evil dog I was just talking about that Cedric warns about. Uh, this is the evil dog I think he was talking about that he had the encounter with at the town. So what do dogs like? Fetch. So the dog takes the stick and runs off. And now King Anthony, who by the way is the same name as the ant that uh, Scott Lang gives his aunt in the Ant-Man movie. Anthony, uh, he says, hey, thanks for helping us out. Maybe at some time in the future we'll be able to help you out. King, king Graham is like, hey, thanks. From one king to another. Thumbs up. Cool. Can't wait for you to help me out somehow. And thankfully, I took that random cookie, uh, animal cookie from the wizard so I could understand everything that's being said. We look forward to meeting you again. So when you move over here, Cedric tells you, hey, there's nothing over there but desert waste. Uh, I'll just hang out here. Which is kind of a lie. There is desert waste over there, but Cedric doesn't hang out there. And I'll show you what I mean. So I'm not going to lie. During this portion of the game, I actually used a map of the desert. Uh there is oasis and you can only go so many screens before you die. Uh, what I would recommend if it's your first time playing is actually making the map yourself. Uh, I've played this game way too many times and died too many times. So what I've done is I've used a map that I found online and then I sped up the desert process so you don't have to watch me slowly walking through the desert as I try to think of some witty, funny commentary about the of the gun. Sands of Doom. Now, over here you get a drink, and you hear the approaching horses. If you do not hide back here, you will be spotted and you will be killed. From across the desert sands, Graham can hear the sound of approaching hoofbeats. Now we see this man with a staff and something in his bag, Open rapping on the door with a very unique password. Steps inside, 
and steps back out without the bags. So clearly to get inside there, what we're going to need is that staff. As a matter of fact, if you actually go up there and knock on the door without it, it says you'll repeat the same word you just heard uh, for the password, oh, but giving. it'll actually tell you it doesn't work. You need something else. So now what we will have to do is find where that encampment is at. Over here, we see a skeleton. Uh, not a big deal, but what we do want is the boot. That boot we'll need later to give someone else the boot, if you know what I mean. That one was not a leash of every joke, by the way. So we're going to quickly save. And if you are making your own map and not using an online map, I highly recommend uh, doing multiple saves, not uh, save over the same place. And every time you hit an oasis, make sure you drink from it. Because they're literally spaced out so that you can't make it. And so we get to this camp. And we see the drunk dude, he passes out. Now, what is funny is since there's water here, what we're gonna do is get a drink of water and watch what happens. Graham is, King Graham is literally standing right in front of the tent with no concern that the guy in the purple and blue sitting in the tent isn't gonna turn his head ever so slightly and spot King Graham just taking his leisure time drinking the water. Now we go into this tent. Now. You have to be careful when you go in here. If you step onto the rug that he's sleeping on, he will wake up and he will kill you. Taking care to be very quiet, Graham reaches out and takes the staff. So now we take possession. the staff. Once again, putting it in our eternally giant-sized pocket. Take another drink of water. Ah, life-giving water, nectar of the gods. And with no concern about being spotted. Now to find our way back. Let's speed it up. Knocking on the door breaks the staff, so we know that we can't use it. Now, be aware, once you step inside, you literally only have a few moments before the door seals closed, whether you're still inside or not. So you've got to grab what you can next to the door and get out, or else it does trap you in there and it ends the game. So now it just basically tells us we have this odd looking bottle and a gold coin. Now it's kind of annoying that they don't go into more detail as to what the bottle is or what it could be because it just looks like a bottle and without actually opening it yourself you'll actually never know exactly what is in that bottle. But opening the bottle will in the game and I'll get to that later on so now that we have the staff and we've used it and we've gotten the coin we've gotten the bottle we can go back and get out of the desert that pretty much oh and the shoe we needed the shoe so we can get out of the desert now and go back where you're not gonna die every four screens The hot sun and choking sands are taking their toll on Graham. He must drink, and soon. 
And if you're walking back, if you're taking that drink of water outside of the uh, temple, even though it does say that King Graham is uh, dying of thirst, you will actually make it all the way out. But if you do not take that drink, I think you die one screen shy, like you die in the screen previous to this one, if you do not drink the water right outside. Continue to head west from here. This is one of the things also I didn't like is that they got rid of the keyboard controls because sometimes the mouse control, as we saw at the end, is kind of clunky. And even when you're clicking on the edge of the screen, they'll just walk back and forth at the from side to side, and they won't actually exit the screen like you're trying to do. And as I said, this is where Cedric was liar. He said he was going to hang out down at the other screen, but as soon as we came back from the desert, he was actually at the screen, and we re-entered the screen. So there's no dodging Cedric. So you come over here, and you walk by the guy, and he's like, Hey, Mademoiselle would not see you unless you have one gold coin. Because one gold coin. And you're like, thankfully, that's what I just picked up. I have Z1 gold coin. Mademoiselle will now see you. Warning. So you go inside, you go and say, watch it, for or clues and this is going to give you the story as to Please why King Graham's castle and family you. has been abducted. Oh. You are here to see Although I did find it annoying that you could not control the volume separately for music and voices, because at times the music is so loud that you can't clearly hear a voice, especially when they have a silly accent. Now we see Mordak playing with uh, Alexander as if he were a toy uh, with a black cat. Now, if you've played King's Quest 3, or if you watched the uh, non-commentary, or even the playthrough version that I did, you know that in King's Quest 3, Alexander is a slave to Mananananananananananan, or however you pronounce his name. And in order to escape him, he is forced to use magic to turn him into a cat. Uh, and then this is how he escapes. And apparently Mordak is his brother. And the only way to reverse the spell is to have the person who originally cast it reverse it. Now, unfortunately, Alexander does not know how to reverse that spell. So Mordek thinks he's lying and is like, you know what, if you don't do it, I'm going to feed your family to the cat, starting with your mom, and then your sister, and so on and so on. He's very dangerous so the gypsy says, you, you have a pretty hard quest in front of you. Here is this cool amulet that will protect you against evil. It will protect you against all but the most powerful magic. Good luck, King Ram. Be careful. That Mordek is a bad one. Thank you, Madam Mushka. And so that was it. We now have a snazzy amulet to protect us from some great evil. You can see that the save game directory is full. As I mentioned earlier, there were times there where I was playing King's Quest V and I forgot to re-enable the recording. So there's a lot of the game that I'm actually replaying several times because I kept forgetting to hit record. So now we go over here and there is a weeping willow. Literally a weeping willow. And she's playing this cool little harp. If you look at her, it's a weeping willow whose little lake or, lake or whatever you want to call it around her 
made from her own salty tears. That is a lot of crying that she's done for quite some time, by the looks of it. Let's talk to her and find out what her story is. We walk into the salty waters and say, hey, what's your deal? She goes on to basically explain, hey, I am not actually a tree, can't you tell? I used to be a beautiful princess. Now, we should already be piecing together that the prince we ran into earlier that was looking for a princess, well, this is probably his princess. Now, why he hasn't walked around this screen, seems like a pretty small forest, and run into her, we're not sure. But we can probably piece together at this point. This is his princess, and she's playing this little harp that sounds so magical and beautiful. But she needs her heart, which the witch took, and turned into gold. The only way I can become human again is to have my heart brought back. Now, all I have to cheer me up is my heart. It's quite magical, you know. It plays the sweetest music you've ever heard. Now, really please, long story. Leave me alone in my sorrow. So now we know we have to help her as well. By helping her, we'll be able to help the prince. And surely we'll get something out of it. And once again, the clicking at the edge of the screen is not working all that well. Enter at your own risk. Clearly, this is somewhere we have to go. So what we're going to do is put on the amulet, because it seems like something dangerous is up ahead, based on the sign. So let us voyage in. And take a shortcut. And Cedric naturally says, you know what, mm, science says don't go inside, you say come on Cedric, and even Cedric's like, no way dude, uh, I'm not going in there. And that is almost a blessing, because that means we get to move around without Cedric giving annoying clues, like there's a poisonous snake. So we appear here, wham! Kapow! The spell has no effect. The evil hag gives a scream. Go on. Give that scream. So we look at her, and of all the hags we've ever seen, she is the ugliest. I don't know how true that is, because in King's Quest 2, there was that Medusa that hung out in the desert, and I don't know if she is considered a hag, but she was turning us to stone because of her uh, hideous appearance. And why was Medusa hanging out in the desert in King's Quest 2? That is not even remotely close to the Greek mythology that surrounds Medusa. Whatever, it's neither here nor there. I, don't I like that how sometimes enough. King's Quest does now reference me, things in Earth. How does one leave uh, for example, in King's Quest 4, uh, when you give the book now. to the minstrel, uh, it's a reference to Shakespeare. So, now it's weird that this fantasy world crisscrosses uh, different legends we'll and things about, about Earth. So anyway, the hag's like, get out, you're uh, trespassing, this is my forest, and you're like, no. So now we know this is the witch that has abducted the princess, taken her heart, and made the crying prince upset. So we need to find out how we defeat this evil hag so that we can recover the heart wherever it might be and uh, get things done so we can move on with our own quest. So we'll save that as, what a witch. I was gonna save it as, she's a witch, but I don't think anyone outside of San Diego would know the reference of the band Snakebite. I don't even think people now would know the reference of Snakebite. So as you can see, any screen you go to, the witch is there to watch you and observe you. And in this case, she actually stands in front of the bridge that leads to her house, which you can't get to uh, unless you get rid of her. Now, here's where I was talking about the bottle, where it doesn't give much of a detail when you look at it. And the only way to understand what the bottle is, is to actually open it yourself. So that's why I just saved the game so that what I can do is open the bottle and show you 
what I'm talking about. This is an old tarnished brass bottle. So once again, it gives a pretty generic example of what it is. If you click on it to open it, out comes a genie who's like finally free after 500 years. How about I put you in the bottle? Boom! And away goes the genie. And you are forever trapped in the bottle with a corny joke of, you shouldn't keep things bottled up, Graham. So let us restore. Now that we know that's what the bottle does, it's a good possibility that if you give the witch the bottle, she's going to be curious as to what it is. Which means the genie will imprison her. So she opens it. Sure enough, the genie appears. Finally free after 500 years. I will put you in the bottle. Ha ha ha. And into the bottle she goes. And whoop, she disappears. And then he disappears. Good. That so you're like, witch won't be seen that here for was a close. long time. But now, how to get out of this dreadful forest? So you're now free to move inside the house. Now inside you can see in that lantern something's flickering. And you can open up the chest, which is the first thing you see. And there's a couple things in here, like a little uh, spinning wheel, uh, sewing thing. You can click around, there's a drawer there. And inside is a bag. Graham reaches the drawer and removes the leather pouch. And over there in the flickering lantern thing, there's What's a this? something Why there. The key? And it's a key. But no wooden heart. So let's take a look at what's in the bag. A small leather pouch is drawn tightly closed. Or let's just open the bag. This appears to well, be like this. So it doesn't give a great description as to what this is as well. So that riddle later on is even kind of along the same lines where you'd, like, you'd have no idea to give this to him other than through trial and error. But we'll move on. We have a key, so somewhere in this swamp of forest thing, there is something that is locked up, and it's a good chance it's the heart. Now we just need to find it. So we go over here, and once again, clicking the corners. Let's go this way. All the frogs that you see, uh, if you are not wearing an amulet, you are turned into a frog. So these are all people victimized by the, by the uh, witch. So we put the key in the tree Graham and open it up. It makes sense that she would take the heart Graham of the princess, to find a turn her into a tree, the door, and then we put the heart tree. into a tree. Graham is so now we have a, a golden heart. Reaching into the well, I think King Graham was always had Graham a golden heart. <laughs> a little golden heart. Uh, it doesn't get any better. And my funny save game titles such as This Takes Heart. Because it's a heart. Yeah, okay, well. The jokes don't get any better, folks, so if you're not enjoying yourself, now's a good time to bail. Maybe just watch the non-commentary version. Now, I admit, this portion of the game had stumped me forever for a long time back in the day. So I eventually figured out that you had to throw the gems, 
and you see Graham reach for him as if he's trying to catch him. Now this I never Graham's knew back in the day, it took me forever, and I think which I ended up calling the hint line to figure this out, that you have to squeeze the, the honeycomb and it creates now, the honey the on the ground, which will end up being the trap. Like, back in his pocket. It took me forever to understand this. So we throw the second gem. We try to throw the second gem and throw it a little closer this time. So the gnome comes out. Ooh, Graham tries to grab him. I don't know why he tries to grab him so far away. So we throw the third gem, which we purposely put into the honey. And bam, now we've got him. So the little man with the squeaky voice says, if you let me go, if you let me go, if you let me go, I promise I'll show you how to get out of here safely. And King Graham says, mm -hmm. I don't think I should do that, How do I know I can but I suppose I will, because King Graham is a trusting kind of guy. An elf never breaks his word. Well, it's against my better judgment, but okay. Move over, Rocky. You're in our way. So he tells this little creature to move, and mm -hmm. looks like he feeds him one of the gems. And Rocky moves, spins around, gets comfortable, and there you go. So now to follow the Nomi guy, or whatever you want to call these guys, brownies? Pixies? Follow me! In here! Warning. This cartoon is moving uh, forward through it. Da -da 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 -da. Run down, run over, run over there. And he's like, here, I'll give you these. It's a fine pair of shoes. Which King Graham accepts. And it's funny because he says, I never take anything without giving anything back. But that's a lie because he takes two other stones. Thank you very much for all your help. I'm sure I'll be able to find a use for these fine shoes. So now we proceed to leave the cavern. Gives a friendly goodbye, and out he goes. And there's Cedric. He's like, "Oh, you're safe." Not to want to venture in that dark forest, Cedric. I thought I'd get out of there alive. It's probably a good idea you didn't go. And now that we have the heart, we can turn around quickly and end this part of the quest. You see that she returns into a normal princess who immediately discards the very harp that she was talking about is really magical and lo and behold just in time the prince shows up it's like hey where you been and she's like i've been planting my roots planting my roots get it because she was a tree uh, if you don't like it, you're just gonna have to leave me alone a beautiful harp get it leave me uh, all right whatever so let's just pick up the harp and carry on since she has discarded it and it seems like it's a harp that we might need a little later on so now we go one screen over where the gypsy was and there's something else we're apparently starting our own band because now there's a tambourine on the floor. Not seeing the tambourine's owner, Graham bends down and rescues it from the ground.
So now that we have a harp and a tambourine, we can start our own band and just forget about the family, but that's not what we're going to do. We're going to continue our quest and see if we can get to the next screen. And here we have a gnome sitting here, with a kid playing with a toy, very similar to the toy maker that we saw in the shop. And literally as Graham talks to him, he talks about how he makes toys, and Graham's like, I want that toy that your kid's playing with. And he's like, uh, no, it's a fine toy, but you can't have it. I made it especially for the laddie. And King Graham's like, can I buy it, trade it, do something for it? And the gnome pretty much says, well, it cost you an arm and a leg, and I suppose I could trade it. So now we know we have to buy or trade this toy to get that toy from the little kid. Now, once again, it's where you looked at the thing and it doesn't even give you a clue, so you give it to the guy. He's like, oh, thanks, where'd you find this? And you're like, the witch had it in a chest. And the gnome goes on to explain, oh, well, she probably didn't realize that it makes gold yarn or whatever. And there's no way if you looked at it, you would ever know that to know that it had any value that you would know to trade it. So again, it's trial and error, essentially, to give this thing to this gnome. Unless there's a story or a fairy tale that I am just absolutely not remembering that this is somehow referencing. Anyway, after you give it to him, he says, Thanks, I'll be going. And you say, not so quickly. What about the trade about the toy? And the gnome finally says, Well, I suppose you're right. Give the toy to the man. The one that I made especially for you. And was made only for you that this man so desperately wants. And so the boy drops it and gives it to King Graham and they leave. The kid's probably crying that his favorite toy has now been taken away from him by this old man who just needs it for reasons. So we go down here and now we can search the hay because we've helped the ants. Now what'll happen is the ants will come to our rescue and help us out. Let's speed this up. And even sped up, it's taking quite a while. And so finally the ants appear, he's like, hey, look what we found. A needle in the haystack. I get it, needle in the haystack. That's uh, it's hilarious. And it's a golden needle. So we know this is special. So now we've gotten a special pair of shoes from the gnome and the gems. We've gotten a very special toy, and now we have a very special needle. This sounds like the three people in the village, town, the tailor for the pin, the toy for the toy maker, and the shoes for the cobbler. Do you really want... And as you just saw right there, you'll see me quit the game and then the video picks up right where I left off. This is because I usually had to restore back to uh, where I'd forgotten to record at. So now we're moving on and you see I've gotten the old shoe in my inventory hand. Because what happens next happens really quick and when I first played King's Quest V back in the day, I didn't realize what I was supposed to do and so there's literally a part that I got stuck at. So it's one of those things that is random. Uh, once you have the shoe, the event is random, and it only happens on the screen. So what will happen is as you're walking down this little path, a cat will begin to chase a rat. You have to have the shoe ready in order to save the rat from being killed. And here we go. And look how quickly that cat catches up. Bow, you hit it in the face, and it's the same cat from the baker. Rat says, thank you, thank you, thank you for saving me. Perhaps one day I can save you. And just so you know, that rat 
is obviously the voice is modified to have a higher pitch, but that is voiced by Roberta Williams herself, if I remember correctly. So now we've got the help of a rat. And now you'll see that my save game directory is empty, because what I do is I pull the save games out after I reach the max, and I put them in individual folders, and I take those folders when I'm done with the game, zip them up into one file, and then I upload that over onto sierrahelp.com forward slash forums. And in the King's Quest section, I have a King's Quest uh, playthrough thread that I've started. And you'll find the save games for, I think, King's Quest 2, 3, and 4 in there. And King's Quest 5. So now we're back in the village. This is a tailor, so we can go in here. Talk to the tailor and you're like, hey, I have I something you might know. want. Wherever it's a golden it. pin. It was in a haystack by the country. So at least this one it's kind of obvious. By so you end? have a pin, oh, it probably yes. ties to the tailor, you give it to him in oh, exchange oh, for Anna the cloak. No and it's the same thing all. for the toy maker. He gave you the clue that he will buy or trade stuff, so when you get a nice toy, you know that that's where that's gonna go. And then there is the cobbler who uh, the nice shoes will go to. But let's let's not get too far ahead of ourselves here. King Grab still needs to get that cloak. So we banter back and forth, saying, "Hey, I gave you that. Clearly means a lot. Would you trade it for that cloak?" And he says, "Sure." And it looks great on you. So we now have the cloak. So we'll leave here, and we'll go to the next shop, which is toys. And my personal favorite from the shop. Not in the game, but me, I'm a kid inside, I love toys. So we go in here, it says welcome back, hello, how are you going, in that unknown accent. So we go in here and take the toy, give that to him. He's like, holy cow, this is amazing. What can I do to get this toy from you? And it basically boils down to, hey, that sled that is obviously a different color than almost everything else in here, would you trade for that? He's like, well, it seems like I'm getting the better end because that's an old beat up sled. Uh, and I can make another one. I'd never get another toy like this. And you're like, that's okay. Just give me the sled. That's fine, that's fine. Just give me. Please stop talking, man, and give me the sled. And you say thank you for finally stopping and letting me have this fine sled. And once again, in the magic of adventure gaming, the sled simply fits into King Graham's pocket. Ouch. And we exit. So now we go to the third and final shop, which is the shoe shop. It's you again, is it? We still don't have any shoes for sale. And she's like, oh, you're back. And we still don't have any inventory. You're like, that's okay, because I have something for you. This fine pair of boots. Let me see them. says, bring it over here, let me check out those boots. They look like a fine pair of boots. She takes the boots, shows it to him, and he's like, OMG, these boots are amazing. Never seen such craftsmanship. Humana, humana, humana. Then the shoes are yours. Everyone's really long-winded in this game. King Graham says, take them, go on. Retire. Old man says, well, I have nothing that I can give you for these fine shoes except for this hammer. Which is actually inaccurate. There's like a, a bowl or something on the shelf, and then there's a couple of tools hanging on the back wall. Regardless, all we get out of the trade is the hammer. And that's all we'll need in the game, but I feel like he was kind of lying. Thanks to you. Why, thank you. A hammer could be very useful on my journey. 
Take care, young man. We'll never forget this. That's right, son. We'll finally be able to retire in comfort. You'll be in our hearts from now on. Come on, mother, let's go home. Let's celebrate our good fortune. And off they go, along with the dog. The family leaves to have a better life. So now we've helped everyone in the village, we're pretty much done here. And once again, this is what I mean by the loading. I've clicked on the edge and keep clicking. He doesn't walk, you have to move it just in the right spot. He walks up and down, and now he finally decides to cross. So now that we've rescued the rat, uh, if you noticed previously when I walked into the other inn, I was being hit over the head and the game would basically end there, there was a mouse hole. So clearly, now that we've saved the rat, we can go into the Swathy Hog Inn. And there's Cedric saying, hey, I'm not going to go in there. There's some seedy people in there. And you could say that... Wait for it. I might be in trouble. Because it's an in. In trouble. Yeah. Now we get to see it happen all again. He's talking about how someone's holding out on him. Excuse me. Oh no, someone's listening in on the conversation. Pardon me, gentlemen, I did not mean to interrupt, King Graham says. And we'll wait for the guy to come stone around the corner, a dude to get behind King Graham, which King Graham should know that's probably a dangerous situation. What should I do with him? Sniff him out. Bonk. So you'll see the rat hole over to the west side of the screen. Normally by now you see, dun dun dun, you got tied up in your problems, but now that we've saved the rat, the rat comes to our rescue. I would like the rope and some fiber beans. <laughs> and the rat thanks you, saying, I'm glad I could help. Hope you have a good day. Don't get caught again. Because if you do, the rat does not come back. Apparently if you save him once, he'll only help you once. So, like everything in King's Quest, make sure you pick up anything that is not nailed down. So we're going to pick up that severed rope, click through all these boxes and barrels and bottles, and see if there's anything of any use. Clickety-click, clickety-click, clickety-click. King's Quest V was the first game, I believe, that did away with the typing. And it's something that I've always hated, because I feel like it made the game infinitely easier. So rather than typing anything like, look in bottle, get bottle, do this, you just basically click the hand icon all over the screen until it does something. And you can even do the same thing with the inventory. You click on the inventory, just keep clicking all over the screen until it does something. So in this case, we use the hammer to break the lock on the door. Do you really want... And we're back. Go ahead and open that door. The cupboard, now, if you go to the east, that actually goes back into the, the inn, Reach gets knocked out again, cupboard. and the game ends. The so you open the cabinet the and take the leg of lamb. Now, when I first played this back in the day, I missed this step every time. I'd always go out the west door, the kitchen door and locked. later on in the game, when you're up in the mountain, it says you're hungry, and I would eat the pie, and if you eat the pie, you can no longer complete the quest because that pie is needed for something else so it took me a long time to find that leg of lamb so now that we've done pretty much everything that needs to be done in the village we can move on and uh, begin our journey over the mountains towards Mordax castle clickety click but if you remember there's still one more thing we must do there's something blocking our path, and it's that 
poisonous snake. So what we're going to do is we're going to imitate what the snake does if you get too close. It rattles at you. So you rattle back, appearing bigger, and that discourages this very determined snake. And uh, he leaves the path. So now we climb up the mountain. And it's going to say, a few hours later, dot, 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 dot. So now we're up in the mountains. And once again, you can see I've saved ahead already because it's one of the instances where I came back, had been playing, had been saving, and then realized I hadn't been recording, so I had to restore back to where I had not been recording. So you walk, and it says, hey, you're getting cold, so this is a natural clue that maybe you should put on the cloak. So we put on the cloak and become a lot more fashionable, and I'm going to go ahead and click on the path. Because this seems logical. No, stay away from the end. But as Cedric tells you, that's not a logical choice because you plunge to your death. Apparently King Graham is not smart enough to simply walk around the path. He just walks right off the edge. We'll blame the cold for that. Graham dons his warm cloak for protection against the freezing mountain air. So now we'll be a little more careful as to how we guide Graham. We'll actually click on the corners, ensure that he's nowhere near a ledge, and escort him up the path. Now the first time I played this, and even when I did this playthrough, uh, because I've, I've already played past this and had to restore, I put the rope on that tree branch. When you do so, you get about halfway, and the tree branch gives, and you fall down and you die. Now granted, you only fall about 15 feet, and that causes your death. But whatever. So the actual correct way is to tie it to the rope. And here's the part where I said that King Graham gets hungry from all the climbing on the mountain. Now. Like I said, in my earlier games, way back in the day, never knew about that like lamb, so I kept eating the pie, and then I'd get stuck uh, a little bit later on in the game. So we climb the rope safely, and you'll see those little ledges. There's only actually a few that you can step on, and they're all the ones on the back. So you do those two, that one, and then the one closest, and then over across the ledge. Now, I died here several times trying to get across the log. Apparently, you just have to try to walk to the east, and he will cross the log, rather than trying to direct him to cross the log. And then, this happens. A gray wolf grabs Cedric and goes down the hill sliding. And you're like, oh no. Cedric, go ahead and keep him. But King Graham, that being as determined as he is, does a running start gets on the sled and is having a little bit too much fun while Cedric's in trouble. He tries to follow, makes the jump, and right. bam! My sled is broken. The sled is broken. So now we're going to follow the wolf on foot. But first, there is a bald eagle here. Graham's heart goes out to the poor thing. And he looks sickly and hungry. So clearly we have to give him something. This isn't where we give the pie away. Because Bald Eagle's not going to want pie, but Here, he will this. take it, I believe. It but what we're going to do is we're going to give him the other half of the leg of lamb. To which he gladly consumes. You are a kind man to share your meager food with a poor bird. Especially up here in these snow With it consumed, he tells you, you've been very nice. Perhaps one day I will repay you. Just like everyone else that you help, they'll eventually repay you if they're animals, but if they're like the prince and princess, they don't care. Whatever. You helped us? Great. And off he goes. So we proceed in the only direction we can go, which is forward, 
and were greeted by two large gray wolves, similar to the ones that took Cedric. So we go inside and they take a knee or a paw next to the queen here. Queen Isabella? I believe it is, not Isabella. So you take the knee, which demands it. And she explains that we are trespassing and we shouldn't be here. Then she commands the wolves to kill us. But hold on. What you do is you play the harp, because that makes a lot of sense that you just randomly play a harp as you're about to die. And it gives you the warning that you should probably watch this video, and that's what we're going to do. Play some music to her, and she's like, oh, that sounds so nice. I guess it's sort of along the lines that music tames the savage beast. That was very lovely music. And she explains it. And she's quite pretty, by the way. Especially for having blue skin. It's apparently my thing. If you know anything about me and my comic book characters, apparently I have a thing for blue skin. Not sure why I'm sharing that, other than it's like pretty early in the morning. Yeah, I may be a little delirious, as you may be able to tell from the tone of my voice. But she pretty much says, oh, that was really sweet. Like, kind of melted my heart. Get it? Because she's like an ice queen. And she's like, but I can let you go on one condition. If you get rid of the Yeti, which has taken up residence, I'll try to get rid of it. I never can. He just sticks around. You get rid of it, I'll let you and your little owl friend go and king graham is like nah just just let me go and keep the uh, owl so sir gray wolf uh will lead us to where the yeti lives down the path we go yonder is the crystal cave there you will find the yeti he explains that the Yeti is just ahead. And there he is, the Yeti. This is one of the silliest, oddest puzzles in any of the King's Quest games. I won't say of all the Sierra games, because Gabriel Knight 3 has the kicker with the cat hair and the uh, tape. So you throw the pie at the Yeti's face, and apparently he's too dumb to figure it out, and plunges to his death. So rather than find a peaceful means to this, uh, you basically kill the Yeti. So we need a part of these crystals, but it's clearly not out here. So we can actually go inside the cave and take a look. So this is one of those few times where the hammer actually lends uh, very gently to multiple uses. Not a lot of Sierra games did that where a single item would have several uses throughout the game. Usually after you used it, it broke or just simply vanished out of your inventory. So now we have the crystal. And I'm not sure who's going to get the Camp Crystal Lake reference, uh, unless you're an 80s horror movie fan. So now that we have the crystal, we can move on, return, and unfortunately that means returning back to Queen Isabella is going to mean that we're also going to be liberating Cedric, our loyal companion, if you will. So what we'll do, uh, let me see what I'm trying to figure out. We'll move over there now and bring the good news that we've gotten rid of the Jedi and we won't mention that we stole a portion of the crystal cave. I see that the Yeti is dead. Queen Isabella will be pleased. Come, follow me. And the 
Force as he bore witness to the end of the Jedi. Yemeni Yeridovi, let's go back. Alright, so you want to watch this movie? We'll watch it. So, Sir Mixalot, or Sir Grafer, or Sir whatever his name is, leads us back to Queen Isabella. Ah, good. You have returned in victory, I presume. Take the knee, she stands, and she's like, So, they told me you got rid of the Jedi. Yes, I did. Now, will you keep your promise and free both me and my owl companion? I want to thank you for reading my novel. She's pretty much, Yeah. You know what? You did it for me. I know who you are, King Graham, and I know of your quest, and I know who Mordak is, and he's evil. Good luck on your quest. You and Cedric are free to go. You two may go. We wish you well on your difficult journey. Sir Greywolf will show you the way out of the mountain. The Grey Wolf uh, is there to escort us out of this crazy place. Down the familiar path again. So here we go. Cedric lands. Now if you'll notice down in the lower right hand corner over that little pool of water, you'll see the body of what looks like an eagle of some kind or a large bird. So we have to make our way up. And oops, and slide. Slide, slide, slippery slide. Alright. Enough of that. So there's that hole right there where you can see we can climb up. Cedric, with his large eyes, apparently did not notice that big bird flying overhead until it was too late. So it's a large two-headed bird called, in this game, a rock. R-O-C, not R-O-C-K, which takes us back to what appears to be its nest. Never a good sign. You might even think you'd see Roger Wilco here. And we see something glittering. And we see the bird nest is, uh, or the bird egg is starting to crack open. The thing that we find is a medallion. So the two-headed baby rock is born. And it certainly seems like it's gonna spell doom for us because we're about to be food. However, it would seem that we are about to be rescued by the very same giant eagle that we had saved. So the two-headed rock snaps at us, they get our cloak, and the giant eagle just drops us off. Now to the south you can clearly see what it is, a large grayish blue brown icon that sticks out from the sand. Uh, rarely does Sierra put things in plain sight, but there we go over here and we pick it up and it's a crowbar and in the north screen you can see that there's just a boat hanging out over there now rarely is anything so easy where he's like hey look it's a boat so if you look at the boat it pretty much just tells you it's a boat that's all it tells you But what we're going to do, because I already know what happens, because I accidentally played past this when I wasn't recording, so I'm going to save it. I'm going to show you why sometimes Sierra games are annoying. So you click on the boat Come to push on, it out, Cedric, and you go ahead to get in it. Aye, aye, Captain. Come on, Cedric, we're on a boat. We're going to need a bigger boat. But no sooner are you set afloat than the boat sinks, because it has a hole in it. So even though we've clicked the look icon on the boat, it actually does not tell you that you notice a leak. 
So you must die on that screen before you know what's happening, similar to the genie in the bottle thing. Unless you just happen to get lucky. So we continue to look, see if there's a, a hole, and unless I'm clicking in the wrong place, the boat seems seaworthy. An old cast off sailboat. So what you have to do let me go here, look at the sail, yep, and everything. Everything seems seaworthy, so what you have to do is take the honey or the uh, the beeswax part and you basically stuff the hole that you didn't even know was there. Hopefully the wax will hold and make her seaworthy. Maybe you have to click the eye right on the corner of that little prow, but there's no indication at all that there's a hole anywhere in this boat. So once again, we shove off, jump in, and tell Cedric once again to follow us. And he's like, okay, well at least this time we plugged the hole in the boat that you didn't know was there. So Cedric jumps on the front of the boat and we sail. And sail. And sail. And sail. Oh, well, we come across an island, which is odd that we went south, but we approached the island to the north. It's neither here nor there. There's a big giant island. Seems pretty safe. Immediately you can see there's something white on the beach, and they even give you a nice little clue by making it flicker. So, before you can do anything, however, we see a blue skinned creature with green wings descending on us. Cedric, look out! Oh, got us both. Ugh, drops us with a rough landing. And once again, we even see something flickering over here. So these would be what mythology would probably deem as either harpies or sirens. Uh, depending on the lore, they're mostly considered sirens since they're by the water. Where I believe harpies are typically considered things that live in a forest. Once again, you can see the glittery thing on the floor. And the harpies discuss how they're going to eat King Graham and who gets them and who ate what last and whatnot. So King Graham listens and finally decides, you know what, let's try this. Let's try to soothe the beast again. And the harpies are confused, they're like, well, what is that? And one of them takes it and was like, hey, it's mine. And the others are like, wait, 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 we didn't decide on that. We all want it. So, a lot like Larry's life, the women just walk out and leave him alone. So now King Graham now has something that he picked up on the floor. Let's move on. Let's move on. Clicky click. Oh no, there's Cedric. He's not looking good and he's coughing like, go on without me. Where do you hurt? And ideally that's what I would do, but unfortunately you have to pick up Cedric and take him along with you. This dude has been nothing but a crippling blow to King Graham's ability to quest. Now before we get too excited, we can still see that thing that's glittering on the beach. Go over there and it's one of those giant shell things. And throw Cedric in the boat and let's take off again. Get out of here before those harpies slash sirens come back and I would personally call them sirens mostly because of this sabotage song also called sirens and now we are back in the boat and now you can see that the island is actually to the north of us which once again is odd because to get to it we sailed south and then appeared to going really to be going north when we actually sailed into the island but now the island is actually physically north of us. So now we are going to sail west. And 
and there we can see that there is a large like tail end or front end is a rusted old of a sailboat. sailboat. The heavy iron bar is a bit rusted from being out in the so weather. What we have now is a crowbar and a fishing hook have any vitality left in it. and a shell and the wand. The amulet glows softly with the power of its own. The necklace that we used against the witch. On a delicate chain. Graham can a random the bracelet slash necklace. The seashell that we just picked up. A would normally use this small hammer to make shoes. MC Hammer. A brilliant crystal shard feels smooth in Graham's hand. The crystal shard. The pouch is empty. The empty this bag that had the gems in it. Key. And the key that unlocked the door to the heart. Who are you? And what are you doing on my beach? So we're not. Out comes this old man who's like, what do you want? Who are you? Try to talk to him. And he pretty much says, what are you saying, kid? Uh, don't bother me if you're not going to tell me what you're here for. And he pretty much leaves again. your help. I can't hear you. Can't understand a thing you said. Gotta speak up, boy. Now get out of here. And the old man comes out. <laughs> you try to talk to him again. Pretty much so he can't hear you. Now what were you wanting? My owl friend is hurt. And so at least that's a clue. Go with the old cartoon where they used to put the seashell to their ear. I'll fix him right up. And Listen. now he can hear you. Lay him on the bed there. These poultices should fix the little fella up good as new. So he says he can help Cedric. We bring Cedric in. My employer would be very interested. Grab some ointment on Cedric's what belly, and now I Cedric is fine. What was in those poultices? My employer would be interested in them. Gifts from the sea, lad. Gifts from the sea. Ain't nothing special. You just gotta know how to use them. I don't think he'd find them particularly interesting. Now, son, what was it you were trying to tell me before? I was trying to find out where the wizard Mordax Island is. He kidnapped my family and is holding them hostage there. I must get to them before it's too late. Oh, I'm right sorry to hear about that. He's a nasty one, that Mordax. I wouldn't want to tangle with him. I tried to talk you out of going there, except I can see you can't leave your poor defenseless family unaided. I can enlist someone who can lead you straight to his island. Follow me outside. Needs your help. He needs you to lead him to Mordax Island. It's a real emergency. Mordax's holding his family hostage. So you well, explain you what's going on. He calls a mermaid. Cedric and I want to thank you for all your help. And comes to your aid. It says that she can't speak normal people language, but she'll lead you uh, to where you need to go. It would have been kind of cool at this point if they would have tied the mermaid back to King's Quest 2 where they make mention that she looks at you and recognizes you and that would have been kind of cool but instead it's just another random mermaid so off we are again to push the boat come on Cedric let's go Brace yourself, Cedric! 
So we follow the beautiful mermaid to Mordok's place. And it looks evil and sinister. And the boat crashes. Are you all right, Cedric? Well, let me see. Oh, I'm fine, Graham. Just a bit rattled is all. And Graham recovers. Cedric whines that there's a board on top of him. And fish lies on the sand beach at the foot of the rocky stairs. Ugh, a dead fish. Well, maybe I can use it. And once again, we can see that there is a dead fish on the shore. So once again, Graham grabs another dead, stinky fish and puts it in his pocket. And we get points. Unfortunately, nothing can be done about the wrecked boat. It appears that Graham and Cedric are stuck here, perhaps forever. No, Graham, don't! You can try grabbing the wood and the remains of the ship, but it'll just tell you that there's no fixing the ship now. And... Once again, Graham plunges to his death, even though it only looks like it's a five-foot fall. And you'd think it's either going to be just rocks there, or possibly even water. So, some of the deaths are really oh, cheesy. Like now we have to carefully navigate uh, King Graham up to here. And now there's snakes. So obviously there's something to do here, because... It stops you here, and there's something sinister going on. Two monstrous statues of grotesque but it's one of those times where you would not know to do something here castle. until you die. So if you try to walk through, well, first let's look at the snakes. Ominous. Too bad. It looks like the eyes have it. So, for example, if you try to walk through, zzz, you get fried. So, we're going to go ahead and restore. And it's one of those times where I just kept poking at stuff until I figured out what it was back in the day. And you hold the crystal up. I have the power! King Graham, da -da 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 -da. Well, Hopefully you got that reference. Let's turn back. Come on, Cedric. Now we are now at Mordak's castle. You can see some stairs, or like a, a little hall to the left. So clearly we know we're not just going to go up the front gate. We're going to take this little side trick over here. See? This is Cedric's like, ooh, this now. place is scary. No, I'll figure this out. Graham tugs hard on the grate, but soon finds it's rusted in place and can't be budged. So if you try to lift the grate, it'll tell you that you're not strong enough to do it. Blah, blah, blah. Even though King Graham is uh, stacked with muscles uh, since eating that fruit. So what we're going to do is pry it open. And then we use the Ooh, same grip bar to hold it up. You don't know what's down there. Well, do you have any better ideas? And now we descend into the cave. No, uh, mind if I wait for you here? And Cedric thankfully oh, says idea, he'll wait outside. You be the lookout out Because him and the maze would have driven yeah. me insane. Well, be the lookout. Ooh, be careful, Graham. So 
so this maze is absolutely horrible even like an online map will not help you so i literally just walked around and around and around and i've sped it up uh, until i found what i needed which is this guy here You wouldn't know what to do with this guy, but after some trial and error, figured out this is one of those times that once again a previously used quest item, a huge beast, <coughs> excuse me, a previously used quest item, uh, will come in handy. So you just talk to him and he just says jib jib or whatever. And you can see he has something on his head, something unusual, but. Really can't tell too much what it is. It just looks like he has a tuft of hair. And sort of what it is. Uh, we'll find out in a second because what you have to do in order to get out of this maze is you have to get something from him. So, <coughs> excuse me, what we're going to do, <coughs> excuse me, doing this now that I've woken up, I paused earlier and uh, now I'm awake so I sound gravelly, uh, we're going to give him the tambourine, like play, 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 and he's like, what's that, tambourine? <coughs> And you see that he now lost the thing that was in his hair. So we're going to go ahead and pick that up. And then now we're going to try to find our way out of here. Once again, I'll speed it up as I'm totally lost in this maze, going in random directions. There's literally nothing to say about this part other than I hate this maze. So the painful part of this maze, uh, even if you do use an online guide, every time Graham enters the direction, so if you turn left, you literally have to turn the map of the maze because it turns with whichever direction uh, King Graham is going. So that's why it was just really difficult to use any form of online map. I just walked around and around and around and around and around until found the guy and then as you can see I walked around much longer trying to find the door because I think the beast uh, that we just ran into to get the hairpin he appears in like two or three different spots so you have a better chance of running into him versus the unique spot where the door out of here is and there's the door so we're going to go ahead and save so I never have to do that again. The hairpin is made of a carved piece of bone with a sharp metal clip attached to it. If you watch Game of Thrones, you'll understand the reference to that save game name. Graham inserts the hairpin into the door's large keyhole and discovers to his amazement that it fits perfectly. Turning it ever so gently, he soon hears a soft click and the door is unlocked. We take the hairpin, jam it in there, and crack that door open. And wait for it to load. And 
now we are out of the maze. We are officially in Mordak's castle. Things are about to get real, ladies and gentlemen. We are about to get into an epic battle with the evil wizard who has taken our castle and our family. But first we're going to go in the cabinet and see what's in here. I've already accidentally uh, played right past this, so the other items in there uh, you cannot get. So I do know also from uh, accidentally playing ahead and forgetting to record and then having to restore back is that Mordak will randomly appear throughout the castle uh, as you're walking through it and he will randomly kill you each and every time. So what you have to do is pretty much anytime you enter a room, it's a safe bet to try to save the game. I don't know if there's specific rooms he only appears in. Uh, but he will appear in like the the hallway, the uh, main dining room area. He appears in his room every single time. It feels like. So what we're gonna do is save. I'm sorry about the delay. While I was talking, you can see that all the uh, save games are gone. I've moved them into another directory, and that's why we were standing here for a second. And I don't know if you saw the save game name, but it says I have to, and then. Get it. I picked up peas. I have to pee. Girl with long black yeah. hair. These are the jokes. These are the jokes. The now we see there's an attractive young woman here just mopping the floor. Apparently does not care that you've just walked in. So let me give her a look. Don't come near me. Leave me alone. I would never hurt you. I'd like to help you. Okay, so it's just a young you. slave girl. Well, clearly there's more to it, oh and God. I'm probably going to have to me. save her. Just go away. Please. I don't want to talk to you anymore. So there's probably more to do with her because she's just sitting there. So there might be something we have that she might need. Warning. This now part going through everything, there's not much there that she would make use of. So let's take a look sure to at the locket. It doesn't really yet. say anything specific. But let's give it to her anyway. And look at that. This will trigger off a cartoon. It's recommended that you watch it. I thought it was gone for good. I lost it on the island so after I was brought it. here by Mordak. You wouldn't believe me even if I told you. But tell me, who are you, and how did you come to be here? My name is Princess Kasima, from the Kingdom of the Green Isles. My father, the king, employs a horrible wazir who befriended Mordak. When Mordak saw me, he immediately wished to marry me and bring me here. Naturally, I refused, and my father agreed with me. But our refusal angered him so much that he stole me here anyway and put me to work as a scullery girl. He says he will never let me go, that a scullery girl I will remain until I agree to marry him. But the thought revolts me. What am I to do? Don't worry. I'm here to save my family from the evil wizard. He's got them here someplace imprisoned inside a glass bottle. If I can manage to rescue them, then of course I wouldn't forget you either. I know the glass bottle you're talking about. So now we see that she it's has been Mordak taken by Mordak and brought here and made a slave. About my presence. Uh, I think this will be the most now the irony would be is if in this game, after King Graham battles survive. Mordak, that she uses away. a spell to turn Mordak into a cat. Can, kind sir. Similar to how Alexander, who was taken by Manenenenenenenenen, and turned into a cat. Oh, sorry, Alexander was taken by men and, and, and then turned uh, him I'm into King a cat. Of Daventry. But that's not how it goes. We will be battling Mordak on our own. Don't worry. Somehow, I'll get you home again. But first, Thanks for the locket. Maybe I can family. help you at some time. Yes, well, 
I can't remember if uh, you do not give her the locket if she actually comes to help you when you are imprisoned a little bit later. better get back to work. And you should keep out of sight. Aye, aye, my lady. So we make the promise that we will help her and she'll help us and uh, everything's great. So we know, following the theme of you've helped the rat, you've helped the eagle, you've helped uh, the bee, you've helped the uh, ants, they always come back and they always do help you. And she does indeed help you later, but like I said, I can't remember if you don't give her the amulet, if she actually does come over and help you. ...as the grotesque organ begins to magically play an eerie tune. All by itself. Let's jam a little ebony and ivory. You can see the top of the organ with the uh, moving pieces as the piano plays. Thought that was pretty cool. Alright, let's carry on. Goodbye. King Graham of Daventry. <laughs> yep. And there is Modak. This is one of those times you know you're obviously going to die. It's a slow, agonizing death. It would have been nice if you could just hit F7 to restore the game and spare yourself watching to die a long death and just get right back to the game. And I don't know if you saw the title of the, the save game where it says oh, I see her in a tower later on. It's obviously a reference to King's Quest VI uh, in which Alexander goes to find her and there is a song called Girl in the Tower which is in reference to her. So as I said, Mordak can appear throughout the castle, so it's good if he can make it into a room uh, to save every once in a while, because he may randomly appear in the next room. random creature that looks more like an alien than anything from a fantasy open the door and chucks you into prison things look bleak with no way out there's a rat who goes into that hole Graham can see a small moldy piece of cheese just inside the mouth that's kind of a clue when you see the rat go into the hole, that there's probably something there. So let's take a look. Oh, there's a piece of cheese. There, got it. The fish hook did the trick in retrieving the piece of cheese from and the mouse hole. Without a doubt, obviously it's there because we have to get it. We can't reach in there, so we'll just use a fishing hook. Aha, you've gotten it. And that, ladies and gentlemen, was a cheesy way to get the cheese. Get a cheesy way, because it's, it's cheese. Never mind. So now we wait, and then she shows up, and I'm going to speed this part up. She pretty much says, hey, I'm here to save you. And I think she only saves you once, so if you do get caught by that alien later, uh, she does not come back and get you out. And we're right back where we started. But we're gonna save because now we have cheese.
So now, obviously, every time you walk into that room, that little blue alien thing is going to come at you. So we need to get by it. And there's always also the chance that Mordak will appear. So now, the alien will appear again. You have to go with the old classic cartoon trick. Uh, usually it's marbles, but there he is. He throws some peas. And he knocks himself out. It's just odd that he has, like, an alien guard. So here's another thing where you won't know until it's too late. What you have to do is you have to find Mananinin uh, in the cat form, like right there. And you essentially have to capture him. So this part has always been kind of tricky. And toss a fish. Eat it. And what we're going to do is we're going to use the empty bag that the peas were in to go in there while he's distracted and capture him because otherwise if he sees you he goes and tells Mordak. So now he is captured. Cats in the bag. Get in instead of cats out of the bag. These are the jokes, ladies and gentlemen. These are the jokes. And now over to the right is the laboratory that we Goodbye, will eventually need to go to, and that's where the final battle me. will take place. Uh, but before we do that, we need to figure out the spells to basically counter uh whoops and now you die king grab the same exact way that you die every time that mordak's around it's another slow and painful death where he essentially looks like he just chokes you he force chokes you basically all right so we're gonna restore back to the cat and as I said, he appears randomly, so we can literally do the same exact thing and walk into that room, and he's not even going to be there. Or he may be, but there's a chance that he won't either. So as you can see, he's not in the room. So we're going to go ahead and save. Graham surveys the bizarre furnishings and horrible figures in Mordak's bedroom. The Random Encounters is a reference to Dungeons and Dragons. If you play, you know what it is. Graham looks out the window and you can go out his room, and see how creepy he is. Strange island. Looks like he has one of those Doctor Who weeping angels. He's definitely got like a snake theme going on because he has that big snake head looking thing uh, that's over his bed. Lying open or it's a really desk. large cone, I can't tell. So we're going to go ahead and go in here. And if you look, it says a large tome draws your attention, King Graham. Come look at it. So, alright, let's go look. So we flip through the pages, yep. Oh, hey, what is this? These will be the four spells that we use to fight uh, Mordak. And essentially what we have to do now is wait here and wait for Mordak to appear in the bedroom through the doorway and he'll go to sleep. So let's go ahead and just save and speed it up. 
Whoops, walked out, and Mordax there. Heliac. Keep it sped up and just walk around. You can see the little eye up there. While we're waiting, I'm just gonna run around, run around. Goodbye. There's really nothing else to do uh, here. And this is one of those things where, uh, whoops. It's one of those things where if you don't wait for Mordak, uh, he will uh, be able to kill you because you will not have the power and the wand. This is the laboratory. Uh, this is where all the magic happens. Literally, get it? This is where the magic happens. So now we're just going to wait. Uh, You'll see like a quick flash up here. That's him teleporting, similar to how he teleported the castle away and then teleported away himself. And it's literally just waiting game. Boom, there he is. He's like, hello, and goes right to bed in his cape and everything. So now we know it's okay to go out there. We're gonna give him a few seconds to fall asleep. Uh, make sure he is out cold. And what we'll do is we'll go in there, we're going to take his wand, and we're going to, since our wand doesn't work exactly uh, very well, we're going to take some of the magic from his wand and put it into our wand. And you can see the eye uh, above the doorway, it's, it's wide open now. It's like, hey, now is the time, bro. save first in case anything does go wrong. You can see with a little flicker there is Mordex wand on the end. Take that and let's get out of here. We go to the shop, and the thing we need is all the way to the right. You can see his wand is all super hyper. Set his wand down. Graham tosses the moldy cheese into the machine's bubbling liquid. Throw some cheese in there, because that makes sense. Machine comes alive. Mordak's wand now barely glows. Perhaps its power has weakened while Kristen's old wand now appears <coughs> completely energized. Excuse me. The bizarre machine looks very intimidating and confusing, which makes Graham reluctant to touch it. So it says it's pretty much uh, completed it. Looks like the Mordak's wand does not have any power, or not as much power, but ours does. You can see now ours is fully energized.
what's going on here? I'll take care of you, you swine. So as soon as you take your wand, Mordak appears. And the fight begins here. The beginning of the end. He calls his wand to his side. Chapow. Just as the Cedric comes flying in, he's like, hey, can growl. Cedric takes some serious hits throughout this game. The wolf uh, takes him down. The uh, sirens that get him, and now Mordak. Now he realizes something's up with his wand, but he's like, I have enough power to destroy you. So you click on him, and you pick something that would counter a flying dragon. This is a little bit of trial and error, but I've got the pattern. So what we're going to do is he's a flying bird-like dragon thing. So to counter that, we are going to go with the tigre, which is the tiger-looking icon. It's kind of like the tiger turning into the guy. Or the guy turning into the tiger, depending on which way you look at it. Why, you little... So now he turns into fire. Now to counter the fire, we're going to turn ourselves, or uh, summon up some rain. And apparently, that destroys Mordak forever. Warning, this cartoon contains material that may be necessary for information or clues to complete this game. Please be sure to check your inventory if you decide now to skip. Now wait skip. for the loading screen. cartoon is about to do. Now Let's watch it. Oh, you try to restore the, well, the castle and the wand Lord is out of power. Dad? Are you sure? Maybe he's only trying to trick you. He's dead all right. He turned himself into a fire, and I put him out with rainwater. He'll never bother anyone else ever again. But now I have a bigger problem. I don't know what to do about my family or my castle. I don't know how to turn them back to normal. After all you've been through, there must be a way. Crispin! I have the solution to all your problems, Graham. So now appears the wizard, uh, who sent us on this quest with Cedric. Well, he didn't send us on the quest, he helped us. And now that he knows that Mordak has been defeated, he's here to help us. 
Nanan into a cat some time back. Obviously, this deed angered Mordak, who could do nothing about it, since this particular spell could only be undone by the actual perpetrator, your son. It doesn't take a great genius to figure out that Mordak took your family and castle in revenge to try to persuade Alexander to restore Mananan back to his old self. I did discover, as now I see, that your castle and family were miniaturized and imprisoned inside a glass bottle. I did some research and found the spell for turning everything back to normal. Now watch! Hocus, Hocus, Aliocus! So now suddenly he has one that's strong enough to undo Mordak's spell, and one by one he brings us back our family. King Graham slowly walks up to them. Oh, Princess Cosima, how could I forget Kisses you? Kisses his wife real quick, and then uh, gives Rosella really long hug here. The others kind of join in. Let me introduce you to my family. This is my wife, Queen Valenie, my daughter, Princess Rosella. And, and my he tells son, the Princess young Alexander. slave girl, come on, I told you that I would save you. you? Let's do this. Princess Cosima, from the land of the because Grenada. you helped. Without her, he explains who everyone is. Here now. She bravely saved my life. My lady, I am deeply in your debt and I will make it up to you. With your permission, I'd like to travel to the land of the Green Isle to see you. Alex is like, hey, I'll see you again. And as a matter of fact, he will. Because that'll be the premise of King's Quest VI. But now it's time that everyone return to their home. So now the wizard With sends Castle home. Alakazam. Alakazam. to do a little thing. What about Cedric? But I'll send all the rest of you home, and I'll send her home, and everything will be there fine. Well, it's great. Mordak may have killed but wait. Is there anything you what about Cedric? Him? Hmm. Oh, yeah, but, Cedric. Ah, yes. I think I know. He's over there, Abra? not looking good. Abracabara? No, uh, Abracadora? Hmm. Now what is that confounded word? Oh, yes! Abra... Cadabra! With a little touch of magic, okay. clearly this wizard is way more powerful than he let on to be. Uh, he undoes Mordak's spell, and Cedric is now fine. I can't wait to see my parents again. Goodbye, Alexander. Perhaps we'll meet again. You can be sure of that, my lady. Before you send us all home, Crispin, I just want to thank you for all your help. And you too, Cedric. I wouldn't be standing here with my family without you two. I'm deeply, deeply grateful. All in a day's work, my boy. All in a day's work, right, Cedric? Right, Crispin. Okay, back home you go. Alakazam. Alakazoo. Alakazee. Well, there so he quickly she is. whisks us away. 
and we're all the load screen. And yes, let's. We appear. So, hand in hand, they head back into the castle. And we get a score of 260 out of 260, and we've reached the end. And here's the credits for the creative team, the artists, and all the voice talent. Thank you for hanging out and uh, listening to me talk about King's Quest V.